as you guys may or may not know, I use OBS to record all of my videos. It's a absolutely amazing program and it makes my workflow really really efficient but the linux version of obs for quite a while has been missing some pretty essential features but over the past year or so a lot of those features have been getting added into it things like browser docs so now i can actually embed say my streamlabs notifications directly into my obs window or browser sources previously if you wanted to have say your stream chat embedded into your video you would have to actually use a really janky plugin that hasn't been updated in about three or so years. Now that feature is actually in OBS or VLC sources so I can actually play a video in OBS without having to like go and bring the VLC window in. I can just drop the video in and it just works. And even things like VST plugins which allow you to actually make use of a lot of audio plugins that OBS didn't support previously. I can live without these features or come up with hacks to deal with them, but once you start using them, you realize how useful they actually are. At least on distros that aren't Arch Linux. Because the version of OBS in the Arch standard repos is actually missing all of these features. However, we actually can go and fix it, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So OBS makes use of a module system where basically you can decide which features you want to enable at compile time. If you want to, you can disable literally all of the extra features and have a absolute minimal version of OBS. But you probably don't want to do that. Maybe you don't want, say, the browser docs because you're just never going to use them. Well, you can disable that one feature and this will lead to a slightly smaller binary and make the application load a little bit quicker. And... If you don't need the feature there, you might as well do that. Basically, the modules for these features have been disabled in the version in the Arch standard repos. But luckily, there's a couple of versions of OBS in the AUR that actually address this problem. Now, even though there's a couple of versions I'm going to show you, I'm only going to recommend using one of them. So the first version we have is OBS-Studio-Git. This is going to come with all of the optional modules, and all of them work as they should, at least most of the time. So this is a dash git package, which does mean it's going to compile the absolute latest version of OBS, whatever the latest commit on the branch it's attached to is, which may mean that if there's a dodgy commit in the repo, it may not exactly be stable. So if you need OBS to be absolute rock solid, I wouldn't recommend using this version, but if you're happy with it being a little bit flaky from time to time, this will do exactly what you need. Also, if you don't feel like compiling this, there is going to be an hourly binary available over in the Chaotic AUR, so you can just go and download that and have it working basically straight away, which is certainly convenient to have. The next version is OBS-Studio-Browser. Now, don't let the name fool you. It is going to have VLC sources and VST plugins as well. It was just made before those things even came to OBS, so this is the name that it got. Now, this is the general recommended version. This will build the stable version of OBS, which is the same version you're going to get if you go and download the binary from the standard repos, but it has the extra modules enabled. But it has one slight problem, and that is one of its dependencies. That is on, where is it? So if we look for, actually if we go show more, CEF-minimal. Now, this is basically what is needed to make the browser source actually work. The problem with CEF Minimal, though, is there's no guarantee it's going to be the same version that OBS actually needs to work. The last version is the one I'm going to recommend. So this is OBS-Studio-Titan652. So this has all of the exact same features, along with some extra patches to make OBS work a little bit nicer inside of GNOME. But the one difference it has is the version of CEF Minimal it's actually relying on. So now it's relying on a version called CEF-Minimal-OBS. So this is a specific package made that keeps it in line with the version of CEF Minimal that OBS needs. You may be wondering why these packages even need to exist. If it's going to be in the standard repos, shouldn't it just be compiled with all of the features and then the users can decide which of the features they actually want to use? Well, there's actually a couple of entries over on the Arch Linux bug tracker that explain why this is a problem. This is a bug report about the browser support. So I mentioned CEF Minimal. What CEF stands for is the Chromium Embedded Framework. What this basically lets you do is embed a Chromium browser into other windows. So in the case of OBS, embedding it 
into a QT window. This is absolutely fundamental to making this feature actually work. Now, the first problem we have is that CEF Minimal used by the OBS Studio browser package is in the AUR. So if they were to require that in the base version of OBS, they would need to go and elevate that package into the standard repo. Even though the package doesn't have that many votes, they could fix this at the click of a button and the problem would just basically go away. But the second issue is the one I mentioned earlier, and that is the fact that CEF Minimal and OBS don't actually keep in line. So sometimes OBS will require an older version of CEF Minimal than the package actually provides. This might not be an issue, but if some major feature changes in CEF Minimal, this would completely break OBS, and you can't have that happening for something in the standard repos. Embedded browsers are very prone to issues like this, and this is the reason why a lot of applications built with Electron just vendor the version of Electron they need, rather than relying on your system dependency. Some applications is going to be fine, but the ones that are a bit slower at updating just will not work. Now, Titan, the maintainer of the package we were talking about earlier, had a perfectly good fix for this. Just go and create a separate package just for OBS that always has the correct version of CEF Minimal. But a couple of people didn't exactly like the sound of this, and having a version of CEF Minimal just for OBS felt kind of weird in the standard repo, so if you want to go and do that, you should be using the version in the AUR, and because of that, well, it's been marked as won't implement, and it probably won't ever be fixed. Now, in the case of the VLC sources, this is missing for a very similar reason, but the reason they closed is actually kind of weird. So if we scroll down just a little bit, reason for closing, already implemented, right, Additional comments about closing, disabled the broken VLC support in OBS 27. So, it's either implemented or it's not implemented. It can't be both at the same time. The problem for this one comes down to the Lua dependency for OBS scripting and for VLC. So, VLC in Arch Linux is built against Lua 52. But for OBS, it expects you to be using Lua JIT. And because of this problem, it basically causes OBS to seg fault anytime you try to add in a VLC source. But Titan, once again, came to fix the problem. Basically, what he did is went and made another version of VLC. If we go and find it, I think it's called VLC. Yeah, here it is. VLC dash Lua JIT, where basically you just build VLC against Lua JIT and the problem disappears. Honestly, Lua JIT is just better than Lua 52 anyway, so I don't know why the package in the standard repos isn't built like this, but that's just the way it is. Now, as for the VST plugins, I wasn't actually able to find why those ones have been disabled. If anyone happens to know why, do let me know in the comment section down below. I would certainly be interested in finding out. My guess is it probably is another dependency issue, judging by what we've already seen so far. I also want to make an honorable mention to the version of OBS you can get off of Flathub. I didn't mention the Flatpak version earlier because I know a lot of you guys don't really care for using these containerized packages and would much rather use a native package for your system. But that version also doesn't have these problems, so if you're perfectly happy using a Flatpak, go ahead and use that version and you won't have to compile it and you'll have all of the features you need. There are still some minor features that are missing, but these are features that can't be fixed from a third-party package. So over on the Ubuntu PPA, it also has Twitch integration. Basically, what it lets you do is integrate your chat and integrate your Twitch analytics directly into the OBS window. You can already do Twitch chat by just using like a browser source, but this is actually something specifically made around the Twitch chat. The reason why this can't be done by a third-party package is because it relies on some private API keys that you don't exactly want to have get out. So unless the OBS team releases an official package for Arch Linux, those features are always going to be missing. Maybe they'll do like a flat pack at some point, but currently the only official package on Linux is the Ubuntu PPA. That's going to be it for me, and if you like the video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libera pay, all of that stuff is linked down below. I've also got a podcast called Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere as an audio release. The video release is on YouTube and Odyssey. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, and upload about five or so YouTube shorts on YouTube and also streaming on Twitch. And I also have this channel available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and...
I'm out. <laughs>